Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is month number two, looking at operations and relations of sets. Stay tuned for a new video every single day for the whole month of October. So, in this video we're taking a look at what is a Cartesian product. Now, Cartesian products are classes of ordered pairs. They're a specific kind of class of ordered pairs. In these ordered pairs, the first element is a member of one class, while the second element is a member of another class. Though these can be the same class, they can even be the same elements. We will use this kind of broken X to represent the Cartesian product of two classes. The Cartesian product A times B is the class of all ordered pairs C, D, such that C is a member of A, and D is a member of B. This may seem complicated, but if you're familiar with middle school level math, you will probably have already used Cartesian products extensively. They're named for the most famous Cartesian product, the Cartesian coordinate plane. This plane is nothing more than all of the possible ordered pairs of the class of all real numbers in itself, or R times R. To be clear, here are some examples. So where A is the null set, B is the class of H, C is the class of I, D is the class of J and K, E is the class of H and I, and F is the class of H, I, J. B times C is equal to the class whose only member is the ordered pair H, I. Because the first part of the class, the B only has one member H, and C only has one member I, so there's only one possible combination of those, H, I. The Cartesian product CB is just that flipped. As we proved in an earlier video, those are importantly different as long as H and I don't equal each other. So that's just the class of the ordered pair IH because I is the only member of C and H is the only member of B. So order does matter for Cartesian products unlike it does for arithmetic products. Or unlike it doesn't, rather. The Cartesian product of B and D is going to be the class of the ordered pair HJ and the ordered pair HK. So the one member of B is paired with each and every member of D to get us a class with two members, both of them ordered pairs. The Cartesian product of C and itself is just the class of the ordered pair I and I because those are the only members of C. The Cartesian product of E and D is going to be equal to the class of HJ, the ordered pair HJ, the ordered pair HK, the ordered pair IJ, and the ordered pair IK. So each member of E is paired with each member of D to get each of those pairings off. The Cartesian product of F and D is going to be the class of H and J, the, cl the class of the ordered pair, HJ, the ordered pair, HK, the ordered pair, IJ, the ordered pair, IK, the ordered pair, JJ, and the ordered pair, JK. Once again, pairing each member of F in the first slot with each member of D in the second slot. And finally, the Cartesian product a times F is just going to be the null set. Since there are no members of A to pair with any members of F, we are left with the null set. You may notice that Cartesian products bear some but not all similarities to arithmetic products. In the number of members in the Cartesian product is the arithmetic product of the number of members in the constitutive classes. So we saw A times F, A didn't have any members, and so in the same way, it doesn't matter how many members F has, A times F is going to equal the null set. Well, that's the same as it doesn't matter what you multiply zero by, you're always going to get zero. For example, Cartesian product of a class with three members and a class with four members will always be a class with 12 members, so long as the three members are distinct from each other and the four members are distinct from each other. Now that we have an intuitive sense of what a Cartesian product is, let's look at the formal definition that we'll use. For all A, all B, and all C, C is equal to the Cartesian product of A and B means by definition that for all D, D is a member of C implies that there exists some E and there exists some F such that D is equal to the ordered pair EF and 
E is a member of A and F is a member of B. In other words, for all classes A, B, and C, if C is identical to the Cartesian product of A and B, then by definition, for all D, which are members of C, that means that there exists an E and there exists an F such that D is equal to E, F, the ordered pair E, F, and E is a member of A and F is a member of B. We're going to call this Cartesian definition in proofs. Up next, are all Cartesian products sets? A proof that is going to be the longest proof we are going to do, or we, at least we have done. I would guess in any logic series yet. I think this may be the longest proof we've ever done. So, before you jump in, be warned, it will be a lot of work. But if you want to, give this a try. For all A and all B, A is a member of V, and B is a member of V implies that A times B is a member of V. Or in other words, if the members of a Cartesian product are sets, then the Cartesian product itself is a set. If the first part and the second part of a Cartesian product, also called the domain and range, which we'll cover in a bit, are sets, then the whole thing is a set. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to see more of these videos, if you want to make sure not to miss any of the single of the videos in this series, which is going on every single day for the whole month of October. And as always, stay skeptical, everybody.